Keeping systems in line throughout your Webflow website can be difficult if you don't set up the right systems at the start. And so if you're setting up swatches as you build out your website, they're gonna end up being inconsistent and a bit of a mess. Rather than doing it that way, it's much better to set up your color system from the start. And that's exactly what we're gonna to do today. We're gonna to find the colors that we're gonna to use throughout our website and then set up a range of swatches so that it's easier to pull from as we build out new pages. So here's our site currently set up in Webflow, but we don't actually have any colors set up yet. So what we wanna do is add a range of black to white colors and the range for the primary color that we're using on our website, which might usually be the color that's used in the logo. So we can manually start with black and then start adding in a range of black to white colors. But instead of doing that, what we're gonna do is generate a color palette. So we're gonna use this color shade generator. And what this is gonna enable us to do is drop in any color that we want and get a range of colors that are darker and lighter around it so that we have a palette to use. So since we start with our gray, let's add in gray. And to make this palette feel a bit cozier, we might make it a little bit more blue. So we'll go to blue maybe about there. So now we have a range of blacks to whites that we can use. So now we're just gonna add in each swatch into a Webflow project. We're gonna copy the hex, go back, add a new color, paste in that hex, and then we'll rename the color. So let's do that to all of the grays that we were looking at. And so now we have a black to white palette set up and we can do exactly the same with the main color that we're using throughout the website. So we'll take this blue that we're using, drop that into the generator and now do the same thing with its dark to light colors. So now we have a range of colors set up for the blacks and the whites that we want to use throughout our project and also the primary color that we're using. We now might want to add in any other colors that we're using throughout the project. And if we do even need to add a color, we can always go ahead and add one, but it's not going to clutter all of the colors that we already have set up. So what is this palette of colors actually going to be useful for? Well, one example is we might want to change the color of a button on hover. So we can change this color to be a little bit darker on hover and then even darker on pressed. And that way we're making the browsing experience of the website a little better in a subtle way. And we can do the same for the text. Rather than having all of the text be black, maybe we'll leave the title black, but then we'll make the subtitle a little bit lighter. And then the button subtext even lighter than that. And this hierarchy makes it easier for a user to be able to read. We can also use this range of colors to break up the content down the page. So we can go down and make some sections slightly darker or work within the range of the main color that we have set up. So as we can see, setting up our colors from the start makes it much, much more flexible to use those colors throughout our website as we build. And if your colors are far too out of order and you can't be bothered starting from scratch, then you can use FinSuite's Google Chrome extension to rearrange your color swatches inside of Webflow.